Welcome to On Microsoft. Conversations with thought leaders in Microsoft technologies. I'm uh, Matt Torgerson. I'm a program manager on the C Sharp language, and I have here with me uh, Anders Heisberg and Eric. And maybe you could tell people what you're. Yep, I'm Anders Heisberg. I'm the chief designer of C Sharp programming language, technical fellow here at Microsoft. And hi, I'm Eric Lippert. I am a member of the C Sharp design team and also uh, one of the compiler implementers. So uh, me and my colleagues, we have a new version of C Sharp 4.0, a uh, new version of C Sharp called C Sharp 4.0 coming up. And uh, we're going to talk a bit about some of the details in there. So um, Eric, maybe you could summarize uh, what the main features are going to be in C Sharp 4.0. Sure, we, we've got a whole bunch of new features coming up. Uh, we are adding covariance and contravariance on uh, interface and delegate types. Um, we have uh, the ability to interface better with uh, libraries that were designed for uh, dynamic programming languages, like uh, uh, the old Office object models that were written uh, against VB, or um, uh, dynamic programming libraries uh, used with uh, Python or um, you know, Ruby, those, those kind of uh, uh, modern dynamic languages. Uh, we have some features that uh, enable better uh, interoperability with uh, Office and with other COM um, programming models, um, the ability to use uh, named and optional parameters, um, and um, a very um, sort of technical feature we're calling the no PIA feature, which lets you um, program against the Office object model without necessarily having to ship around the, the large and unwieldy bucket of metadata that is the Office primary interop assembly. Did I, did I miss anything? Yeah, no, I would say, yeah, yeah. No, I think you, you covered them. Yeah. I, there, there are basically, I think there are, at least when I think about it, I think of them as being four four new buckets of features. There's bucket number one, which is dynamic support for dynamic programming or support for dynamic languages. Bucket number two is named and optional parameters. Bucket number three is improved COM interoperability. And then bucket number four is co and contravariance for interfaces and yeah. delegate types. Yep. Okay, so let's start out with this dynamic thing. <coughs> C sharp is a statically typed language, right? What the heck is going on? Well, it turns out that, that yes, C Sharp is statically typed, um, but lots of things in the world are not statically typed. Uh, and, 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 and when you try to talk to something that isn't statically typed from C Sharp, then the experience gets kind of unpleasant. Uh, let's say, for example, you want to talk to Python, a Python object. Well, you have to call some sort of Python interoperability API or whatever in order to to you know call the Python method and the way you invoke the method is you know Python dot invoke of method name comma and, and, and you know params list of arguments or, or something um, likewise if you want to talk to the JavaScript Dom you have to do strange incantations if you want to talk to uh, a com or lay automation server that doesn't have a type library. You have to go through, uh, you know, reflection and method invoke in, in in reflection, and so you sort of fall off the cliff into this low level grumbly land of, of all sorts. And and for each of the different things you might want to target, it's a different methodology. Uh, now what we're doing in C Sharp 4.0 and in .NET 4.0 is we built this piece of technology called the Dynamic Language Runtime, which you can think of as as just as the Common Language Runtime unifies all statically typed programming languages on our platform, so does the dynamic language runtime unify dynamically typed programming languages. And it really, in a sense, builds on top of the CLR and adds all of the dynamic capabilities that were previously either not there or hard to, hard to use. Uh, now in C-sharp 4.0, we support talking to the dynamic language runtime. And the way we do that is by introducing this new static type called dynamic, which and this is a bit of a mind bender, but you use the dynamic type or the dynamic keyword to statically type something as dynamic, meaning that the compiler knows that, ah, whenever I am calling a method through this 
variable here, it's a dynamic invocation, or whenever I add these two dynamic guys, it's a dynamic evaluation that I have to perform. And then we, in a sense, get a unified entry point for all the different kinds of dynamism that might be below, be it talking to the office uh, automation models, talking to Python, talking to Ruby, talking to JavaScript objects, or what have you, it all it all looks the same from above, and, and, and C Sharp, in a sense, now natively supports dynamic programming. And really, C Sharp now becomes, in a sense, a hybrid of static and dynamic typing. Right. The, the intention is not so much to make C Sharp a dynamic language. You know, people who use C Sharp use it because they like statically typed languages. But the intention very much is to um, pre prevent you from having to write all of this terrible, terrible code, which is basically plumbing, right? right. You know, you want to be writing programs. You don't want to be writing plumbing. So, but dynamic to me, that sounds like this is going to be hideously, hideously ineffective, inefficient, right? It's going to be, it's going to take like hundreds of times uh, longer to do things. Uh, is that is that the case? Being a maybe not 100% impartial on, on this. I have always you know, been a believer in statically typed programming languages and the advantages that you get from not just finding errors at compile time, but also by having a deeper understanding of the types, you know, the compiler can produce more efficient code. But dynamic languages and dynamic runtime environments have come a long way in the past five or 10 years. Um, and really, it's possible today to generate very good code for dynamic. It's never going to run as fast as a static program, but sometimes it's not exactly the speed that matters here. It's more the, the productivity of getting the app up and running and debugging it and, and making sure that, it, that it's functioning correctly and, 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 and so forth. Um, and we're certainly seeing you know, that dynamic languages can come very close to static languages in, in performance. But I would not personally, if I had to write something that is time critical in nature, no, I would not write it using the dynamic features of C Sharp. I would write it using the way people write C Sharp code today. I, I would say the dynamic stuff is mostly intended for interoperability, but also for cases where things are dynamically typed by nature. Say, for example, when you're talking to you know, an XML or you're, you're trying to grok an XML document. Well, you know, if you don't have an XSD schema for it, which for most XML documents you don't, well, then it is by nature dynamically typed or loosely typed, right? I mean, there is really no static checks you could do that, that would make it <laughs> more correct to use, mm -hmm. right? And the same is true if, if, you're, if you're shooting queries at a database through, you know, uh, like SQL and strings or whatever, well, the results that come back are not statically typed. They're dynamically typed, or you may not know what this store procedure is going to give you. So it's going to be dynamic in nature anyway. Uh, and so why not make it better to talk to those dynamic things? And, and the same, of course, is true if you're talking to dynamic programming language or, or JavaScript DOM or what have you. Right. And, and let's, let's look at the, the supposition of the question and make sure that we're comparing apples with apples here, right? If you are comparing talking directly to a statically typed object model versus talking to a dynamically typed object model, well, clearly, since the analysis can be done at compile time, at runtime, the static one is going to be faster. But now compare talking to a dynamic object model in C Sharp via using our DLR mechanism versus doing what you had to do in the past, which was to use reflection or some other plumbing mechanism to make it work. The um, geniuses over on the DLR team who have studied this problem for years and years uh, have come up with some very efficient mechanisms for doing dynamic dispatch and for uh, being smart about caching the results uh, so that the second time you make a dynamic call, it is almost as fast as doing the, right. uh, as doing the static call. Right. All right. So in conclusion, using the DLR is much, much faster than what you had to do before when you went dynamic. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. Yeah. In fact, there's some interesting uses of generics in there that, that you know, will plumb through a straight, strongly typed path if, if the thing you're calling dynamically so happens to have the same argument types as the ones you're supplying. We can just shoot them straight through mm -hmm. you know, without having first box them and unbox and so forth and get a lot of efficiency out of that. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.